Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. <clears throat> On the uh, advisory watch and warning graphic here, we've got a uh, high surf advisory out for the central Arctic coast. Uh, that's out until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, Saturday morning and northwest winds 20 to 30 miles an hour expected to pick up here and that'll build the seas seven to nine feet so there could be some minor beach erosion later on and again that's uh, out through saturday morning well actually until 6 a.m and from there satellite imagery got one system here slowly moving eastward with the main low center and upper trough coming across the panhandle today lots of clouds rain and showers there the front pushing well into canada and uh Clearing out here across South Central Alaska, Susitna Valley on down into the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, and Cook Inlet. Dry there for Kodiak Island. Nice out in Bristol Bay and across the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, more clouds there over the West Central Interior, but a few breaks up around the Kobuk Valley. And uh, basically cloudy there across the Arctic coast with uh, a little bit of a disturbance here, bringing some moisture into the eastern areas and back out to the west, the next system developing here, the uh, cloud shield developing warm front and then the main low center farther back to the west. And you can see that uh, whole mass of moisture gradually shifting east and it'll begin to take a turn more to the northeast. It'll be pulling right into Bristol Bay later tonight and into tomorrow. Otherwise, we've got uh, clouds up here over the northern Bering Sea retreating back to the north uh, and that allowed it to clear out a little bit there from uh, earlier today for the Pervilofs and then this afternoon around Nunavak Island into northern Bristol Bay. And on the chart today, there's the uh, developing one center right down in that area and then the other one back to the west here. These two will combine with the colder air coming in and that'll kick that up to the northeast. Otherwise today, areas of rain here across the southwest interior into northern Bristol Bay and a trough right up through the central interior. That kicked off a few showers here up over the eastern areas and also back to the uh, Seward Peninsula, but basically not a lot going on with it. See some clearing in there as well, some sunshine and uh, clouds from the Brooks Range on across the north slope and some areas of light snow occurring with this system there just off the Arctic coast, uh, basically from about uh, Oh, just east of Barrow on over toward Barter Island, Kaktovik, and then some uh, mixed or mixed rain and snow occurring on the western Arctic coast there. Otherwise, uh, the Panhandle again got the this system slowly moving eastward. Rain mostly over the central and northern areas uh, to about Yakutat, drying out, sunshine breaking out over Prince William Sound. Still a lot of clouds here over the Copper River Basin on up into the eastern interior. And for tonight, you'll see that uh, low center slide southeastward. So showers will be lingering, begin to taper off later tonight on toward morning for the uh, northern panhandle, Juno back over to Yakutat, probably ending at Yakutat shortly after midnight. But uh, continuing with uh, periods of rain or numerous showers here over the southern panhandle as that uh, low slides into the area and weakens. And the northwest winds back here also begin to diminish. Uh, getting a little breezy, Kodiak Island diminishing later tonight. Cook Inlet, uh, some northerly winds keeping it dry. And most of the uh, moisture will be along and either west or north of the Alaska Range in the form of uh, rain or snow showers in those areas. Of course, the higher elevation is snow. Lower ele elevation still in the form of rain, and then uh, got a front here up over the northern interior with uh, all of the moisture again, the eastern Arctic coast, southward to the uh, central Brooks Range, onto the east, breaking out back to the west, drying out with some clearing on the western coast, and still an area of uh, rain and snow showers occurring. 
Could be some areas of fog in there as well for the Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula areas on down to St. Lawrence Island. And the next system here developing down to about 1,007 millibars here, the low tracking up to uh, near Dutch Harbor. And the warm front wind rain increasing here across the Alaska Peninsula again later tonight and uh, kind of in between there for Bristol Bay and a weaker system up here to the northwest. Well, this system on Saturday will continue to move northeastward down to 990 millibars now. Pretty good northwest and northwest winds coming in around that center. Could see gusts as high as 50 miles an hour there for the eastern Aleutians and uh, possibly gale force winds out ahead of the front here as it begins to approach Kodiak Island and back up to the uh, northern Bristol Bay coastline. Looks like rain spreading northward. Across the uh, Kuskokwim Delta, most of the Kuskokwim Delta extending eastward to uh, Iliamna into Kachemak Bay. Rain again spreading over Kodiak Island. Should be a mostly sunny day here for South Central Alaska. Again, uh, light wind conditions and showers though up over the uh, western Alaska Peninsula areas and in and north of the Alaska Range there. So portion of the Tanana Valley, the 40 mile country, could see a chance of showers. Other side of this front, higher pressure, a little cooler and uh, a little more in the way of clarion occurring from the Yukon Delta westward, uh, becoming mostly cloudy again by the time you get into the uh, Kobuk Valley and Selawak Valley. Chance of mixed rain and snow showers over the Seward Peninsula in toward Kotzebue Sound. And again, uh, mostly cloudy skies with areas of light snow or snow showers all across the North Slope and the Arctic coast. And gusty northwest winds here across the central Aleutians with rain becoming more showery and winds a little more westerly and diminishing out over the western Bering and Aleutians. And the southeast coast, uh, look for increasing sunshine here over the northern areas. Shower chances again greatest down to the south, but diminishing across even those areas in the afternoon. Moving on to the outlook for Sunday, that system takes a turn to the east here and uh, deepens a little bit from tomorrow's value down to 987 millibars, be cutting just actually south of the Kenai Peninsula coming across almost right over Kodiak Island, tracking up to uh, near or just north of Middleton Island for the low center. So rain across southern Alaska mixing as you get into the colder air here with the moisture riding northward and a chance of snow or snow showers. Uh, light though, here in advance of that front across the Tanana Valley, down into the northern Kuskokwim Valley, I could see some snow, but the heaviest precipitation will be in this portion of the front here as it rolls into the southeast coast. Could see periods of rain, moderate, possibly heavy here on the north coast, lighter amounts down toward Dixon entrance, and again becoming more showery back behind, but that southerly flow that'll uh, Keep a general area of rain going from Yakutat into Cordova and Prince William Sound and even back uh, across the Kenai Peninsula into Cook Inlet through most of the day on Sunday. Back to the northwest, uh, look for dry conditions here with uh, maybe some breaks in the overcast and still areas of light snow up over the north slope and the Arctic coast. Next system pushing northeastward there into the Bering Sea, 977 millibars. Looks like uh, gale force winds with that front as it pushes in toward the Pribilofs, uh, a little bit weaker down with the trailing edge right across the Aleutians, but that should spread rain eastward to Adak by late in the afternoon Sunday. Taking a look at uh, lows for tonight, lower 20s here th through the Brooks Range, and then rising in the mid to upper 20s over the North Slope to lower 30s out along the Arctic coastal areas and mid 30s or lower to mid 30s here for the Seward Peninsula. Inland areas could see upper 20s. Same thing for the Copper River Basin, otherwise 30s to near 40 here, South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, lower 40s, Kodiak, and near 40 for Bristol Bay, mid 40s or lower to mid 40s for the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, as well as the Southeast Coast. And then the highs for tomorrow afternoon, lower to mid 50s for the Panhandle, and mostly lower 50s or upper 40s, lower 50s, South Central Alaska, mid 40s, Copper River Basin, lower 40s, Tanana Valley, on up toward Fort Yukon, uh, Mid-20s, lower 30s through the Brooks Range and lower 30s, maybe mid-30s for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast. Upper 30s here in the Northwest, mid-40s down across the yukon Kuskokwim Delta areas, Pribilofs, lower 50s along the Alaska Peninsula, near 50 all the way out to Shimia. Lows for tomorrow night or Sunday morning low temperatures, lower 40s here for the Aleutians, upper 30s for the Pribilofs. 
possibly mid 40s here for the Alaska Peninsula, falling back to the mid to upper 30s for the Bristol Bay area and down to areas falling below 20 degrees here, maybe the North Slope in the Brooks Range, otherwise lower 20s, upper 20s now or mid to upper 20s for the Arctic Coast, lower 40s for the uh, South Central Alaska area here and about the same across the Panhandle. And then the highs for uh, Sunday, looks like a little bit cooler Sunday afternoon than Saturday here for the Southeast Coast with upper 40s to lower 50s. And uh, looks like all in the upper 40s here across South Central Alaska with uh, more clouds and rain. And then uh, mid 40s over the central interior with uh, lower 30s again along the Arctic Coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Looking at flying weather, we've got uh, an area of IFR up here across the western and uh, to the eastern Arctic coast and most of the north slope with uh, the Brooks Range pretty marginal. IFR out here and marginal VFR. Seward Peninsula down across Yukon Kuskokwim Delta into Bristol Bay and some IFR coming up here with the next uh, storm in across the eastern Aleutians. Marginal VFR, Copper River Basin, IFR over the eastern Panhandle. And for tomorrow afternoon, this area up here to the north that uh, retreats back off the eastern Beaufort Sea coast there, uh, leaving behind uh, widespread area marginal VFR for the north slope all the way and including the Brooks Range. And then some VFR from the western upper Yukon Valley, westward across the Koyukuk, Kobuk Valleys, on out to Kotzebue Sound. Marginal VFR here in northern Bering Sea, or actually all of the western, eastern Bering, southwest coast, through the central interior with VFR, south of the Alaska Range, Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, all the way down into northeast Bristol Bay. IFR increasing here across the Alaska Peninsula, southern Bristol Bay spreading into Kodiak Island, and improving here across the southeast coast. For Sunday morning, uh, areas of marginal and IFR here, for, mostly over the Kuskokwim Mountains, southward into Bristol Bay, along the western central Alaska Range, Kenai Peninsula, turning an arm into Prince William Sound, uh, pretty good now through the central interior, and then uh, areas of IFR, central and eastern Arctic coast, with uh, spotty marginal conditions over the Panhandle. And then for Sunday afternoon, that increases uh, marginal VFR here across the entire southeast coast, some IFR over toward the border, IFR Elfin Cove Yakutat along the North Gulf Coast and locally up toward the Wrangell Mountains, IFR back in along the Western Alaska Range and marginal for the Central Range and widespread IFR area again there from the Brooks Range here across the Eastern North Slope and Central and Eastern Arctic Coast with another band of IFR pushing eastward with another front into the west central Bering Sea and Aleutians. For passes, Anatovic marginal VFR becomes VFR in the late morning hours. That same forecast for Adigan as well. Most of passes improving here for the Alaska Range, Lake Clark Merrill, starting out marginal becoming VFR, same forecast for Rainy. And for Windy, marginal becoming VFR. Isabel marginal also becoming VFR and Mentasta, marginal VFR improving probably late in the morning, and Tanita will be VFR the entire day, as well as Portage. Moving on to Chilkoot and White, uh, both passes there, VFR. Freezing levels tomorrow at the surface here, all of the North Slope Brooks Range down into the uh, Kobuk Valley to the Seward Peninsula, and then northward there of uh, roughly the Yukon River, with 2,000 feet up into the central interior areas westward across the northern Bering and then 4,000 feet from about the central southeast coast up along the north Gulf Coast of the Kenai Peninsula down across Shelikoff Strait to the Alaska Peninsula there a little bit milder over the eastern Aleutians at roughly about 6,000 feet. Icing uh, potential tomorrow could see some uh, areas of considerable moderate rime icing mostly above 5,000 feet here coming into Bristol Bay also, associated with that next developing system pushing northeastward, and then uh, icing will be spreading over Kodiak Island, light to isolated moderate rime icing, especially in the afternoon, and then things improving back across the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians. Up north, an area of icing still possible with that disturbance lifting northeastward uh, across the Seward Peninsula and into the west central interior. Otherwise, possible, IF, or possible icing here over the southern southeast coast. Uh, mixed variety above about 5,000 feet. Should be over by tomorrow afternoon. 
Jet stream, big storm rolling up in toward Bristol Bay, ridging out ahead of that should make for dry conditions with some sunshine over the interior. Northwest flow dry for the panhandle. 9,000 foot winds, uh, again that low coming into the Bristol Bay area in Alaska Peninsula, pretty good winds around that, 50 knots out of the northwest across the Fox Island, southerlies at 30, beginning to increase and push toward Kodiak Island, light variable winds over the remainder of interior Alaska, east 20 maybe on the eastern Arctic coast, light northwest breeze there for the panhandle, 10 to 15 knots, 3,000 feet, much the same pattern, 10 to 20 here, strongest on the south coast of the Panhandle, otherwise pretty light with the ridging up into the eastern interior all the way to the Arctic coast. And then the big winds, of course, with this system here, 30 to 40 knots uh, blowing around the center. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop here, Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service with another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining me today are not just one, but two people, both with the last name Stevens, which is even more fun, but no relation. We have Eric Stevens from Gina mm -hmm. and George Stevens, who is a mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska mm -hmm. Fairbanks. Did I get that right? Yep. Awesome. And today you guys brought a really cool toy or I should say tool with you. It's a sandbox. But why are you guys working on a sandbox? Well, it's part of our senior design project, and we were approached by um, EPSCOR to build, build this from, for them. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, had a proof of concept that they developed years, years, about a year ago, I think, and um, the, uh, uh, they w wanted a more robust ver version that they mm -hmm. could pack onto a plane and take places. And it's a handy learning tool for kids and, all, and adults. So you're a mechanical engineering student. You've built a traveling sandbox for the experimental program to stimulate competitive research, EPSCOR, and Gina's facilitated this. But why do we need a traveling sandbox? Well, the, the uh, prototype was such a big hit that uh, they decided they wanted another one, actually two, that, they could act that would be easier to travel with, you know, um, possibly marketable even. Okay, so this is a traveling sandbox. It's got a lot of bits and pieces and, and a computer hooked up to it. What is the computer doing with the sand? The computer actually uses a connect sensor to read the topography of the sand or the shape of the sand, mm -hmm. which, and then the computer translates that into information which it projects using a projector onto the sand showing topographical lines and which is representative of the shape of the sand. Okay, so this is a live mapping tool? Yeah. It's interactive. As you're moving your hands through it, it is actively following and changing the lines to fit what you're doing. That sounds like something I could have in my backyard. Yeah. It'd be a <laughs> lot of fun. So you guys had to change the design a little bit to make this more Alaskified, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how'd you do that? Well, um, the original was made out of basically lumber and Simpson strong tie type mm -hmm. stuff. And we re rebuilt it to make it lighter and Basic and basically more transportable. We can pack it down to a fairly small size and it can be loaded onto a plane and flown anywhere in the state. Which you guys did today. And you yep. have plans to take this in other places of Alaska, right? Yep, we're actually going to be headed down to Homer with it later today. Okay, very good. Eric, how mm -hmm. does this fit into uh, science learning around Alaska? Well, you know what? I think it is a tool and it is a toy. And yes. it brings out a smile from an eight-year-old oh, yeah. and the smile from a 48-year-old oh, with yeah. that inner eight-year-old yes. wanting to get out. The, uh, the sandbox, it's an interactive learning tool that teaches us how topography in the three dimensions is related to, say, a two-dimensional map. More about that later. Just like George was saying, it's got a connect sensor, not just for video games anymore. It can sense out the, the lay of the land there, yeah. feeds that information in the computer. computer identifies that, sends a signal to a, pro a projector to send topographic land lines to map over that that uh, lumpy ground so right. you get a three-dimensional topo map out of it and my favorite thing about it this is the thing that stops people at the the trade show they stop at your booth and, and sure. don't leave is that you run your hand through that sandbox and it responds in in real time it remaps yeah, cool. the, top, the topography as you get to be Mr. Tectonic Plate Drifter <laughs> there. You can make things how you want. Well, what if we made a really high mountain here and a low valley there, and the lines adjust to what you did? It's a learning tool because it, yeah. it shows you that connection between 
these two-dimensional topo lines and, and what's really out in Alaska. And Alaska's a place with all kinds of topography. Mm -hmm. You know, we're from the Great Plains where your topo maps tend to be just like blank pieces of paper, but Alaska is particularly gifted in this regard, and, and this tool helps us, I think, learn more about our state, really. Absolutely, and so this is going to enha enhance uh, STEM learning, the science, technology, engineering, and math in, in many different uh, locations around Alaska, then. This would be something that kids and teachers can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. It sure is, and I mentioned the uh, it's, it's like fly paper at a booth that, <laughs> or, or at the uh, Science Potpourri, when we had Greg's original version of this sandbox, and okay. that one was made out of scraps of wood, and it, it was a prototype, but even that one, before it had some of the refinements that, that George and crew have made for this newer, right. um, upscaled, maybe a 2.0 version of the sandbox, okay. even that one was so attractive to people, it just demonstrated that this, this has potential to be a learning tool, an outreach tool, an education tool um, that can now is portable and can go places in Alaska. Um, of course, there's only one sandbox, can't be everywhere at once, but hopefully it gets out there, gets the word out about EPSCOR and, and what science is being done here for Alaskans. All right, that sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to get my hands in the sand and try this out for myself. Mm -hmm. We're going to demonstrate this here in our next segment of Alaska Weather Facts, but before we go, we want to remind you that EPSCOR, which is a, a new acronym for me now, but I'm going to remember this because you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and I invite you to do that. Alaska EPSCOR uh, is also uh, something that facilitates science learning at uh, the University of Alaska around the state, and that stands for Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research, so check that out, and make sure you tune in in tomorrow because we're going to have the next version where we actually get our hands in the sand and check out how this works and demonstrates that topography. So for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts and we'll see you again next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. We've still got uh some new ice forming inside the barrier islands here, uh, actually all the way back to the west here, and a little bit to the east, the main uh, ice area still off to the northeast. And continued ice growth here, mostly during the overnight hours, is expected to continue across uh, just about, or again, inside the barrier islands along the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline for the next four or five days. And for the coastal waters forecast tomorrow, small craft advisory is gonna have that low sliding southeastward. 25 knot wind seas just under 20 feet here on the south coast and 10 knot winds but with 13 foot seas on the north coast. Light winds north northwest 10 knots over the inside waters with seas two except uh, Stevens Pass or Clarence Strait up to six feet. Outlook for Sunday big change uh, gales rolling in gust 50 knots here north coast gust 50 knots out of the south northern Lynn Canal gales from Lynn Canal down through Stevens Passage small craft advisories for uh, Clarence Strait. And for Saturday, South Central Alaska, Cook Inlet, west winds 10 knots, 15 knots south of the Forelands. Much windier though, down toward uh, out of Kachemak Bay, west 30, gale force westerlies there across the Barren Islands, falling back to 25 knots, a little more northwesterly here, western North Gulf Coast, and then down to 15 knots there on up into Prince William Sound. And then the outlook for Sunday, we've got gales now all along the North Gulf Coast here with uh, 35 knots from the south to southwest 40 here on the west side. Winds coming up in Prince William Sound, east 25, and 25 knot wind, small craft advisories here, southern Cook Inlet, west 45 knots, blowing out of Kachemak Bay with seas at about 13 feet. 45 knot winds also across the Barren Islands. And Bristol Bay, east 35 tomorrow's at low poles northward, right about over the Alaska Peninsula, North 40 becomes southwest 50, so storm warnings along the south coast of the Alaska Peninsula with gales from Castle Cape up to Sitkanak. Then for Sunday, westerlies 45 knots here, uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, also up the east side of Kodiak Island. Westerlies at 35 for Bristol Bay and Shelikoff Strait, west 30 for the Alaska Peninsula. Aleutians tomorrow, northwest, gales here, especially across Unalaska Island. That's where we'll see the 40 to 45 knot winds. A uh, little bit lighter, still minimum gales back to Nikolski. Much lighter for Adak and Atka down to 20 knots and westerlies 15 to 20 out west. And then for Sunday, the next system coming in, 45 knot winds with 40 knot winds all the way over to Amchitka Island. 
Small craft advisory, central Aleutians, and also for the eastern Aleutians, lighter wind zone, more west-southwest at 25. And for the southwest coast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, gale warnings, northeast, 35 knots. North of Nunavak Island, uh, much different, same direction, but down to 10 knots, seas 5 feet. North 15 for St. Lawrence Island, and northwest at about 15 there for the Pribilofs. Taking a look at Sunday, uh, small craft advisories for St. Paul, St. George there with uh, winds coming down to 25 south of Nunavak Island, picking up to 20 knots north of the island, and gales coming into the uh, St. Matthew Island areas, mostly off to the west and southwest in that zone, northwest 20 for St. Lawrence Island. <clears throat> and uh, whales on up to Cape Beaufort, northeast at 10 to 15 knots, western coastline, mostly north, pretty light, 10 knots, picking up to 20 knots in the central coast. Small craft advisories here on the east side, northwest, becoming west at 30 knots with 9 to 10 foot seas. Then for the uh, Sunday outlook, coming down 10 to 15 knots up here with the seas subsiding to 4 feet. Northeast 15 4 foot seas there in the central coast with that pattern all the way down to Cape Thompson and then north 20 from Cape Thompson down to Wales. <clears throat> For tonight, again, uh, gusty winds and snow here eastern Arctic coast. Down to the Brooks Range, this pulling off, drying out back to the west with less wind. And then areas of uh, mixed precipitation here really over the central interior, back out to the west. Rain, southern panhandle diminishing in the north. Next system spreading wind and rain up into the southeast bearing in Bristol Bay there with rain spreading over to Kodiak Island late in the afternoon. Got a band of uh, moisture, showers of rain or snow through the central interior, more flurries up along the Arctic coast. And then for Sunday, this low tracks just south of the Kenai Peninsula, right near Prince William Sound or a little bit to the south with, uh, again, the gale force winds ahead of the front, rain heavy at times, northern Panhandle, next system driving into the western Bering Sea. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.